Welcome back to the Big Ranch Show. Thank you for joining me. Now, this next story comes from Texas. And I'll do my best to stay calm. I make no guarantees. Now, I grew up in Texas. I thought it was a wonderful state growing up. When I was a kid living in Texas, was just I, I thought it was awesome. I didn't think it could be much better. In fact, if you'd asked me when I was 18 years old, if I'd ever move out of the state of Texas, I would have told you, you're crazy. I loved the history, the lore. At the time, people seemed to be, all in all, decent people. All in all, growing up, Texas was wonderful. T-ball, baseball, soccer, football. I lived off in the country for the most part of my growing up years. And, and it was wonderful. Unfortunately, over the last five to ten years, Texas has slid into a state of fascism. I don't say that lightly. When I moved out of Texas in 2020, my goal was to move back at some point. Simply because my mother lived there. And I did, like I said, love the history. But unfortunately, that will never happen. Not only because of the laws that they passed against transgender people and the LGBTQ community, but the inhumane treatment of migrants on the southern border. Now, bear with me here. And you'll see why it's going to be hard for me to maintain composure. A quote from The Guardian. Nicholas Wingate, a trooper slash medic from the state's Department of Public Safety, expressed concern over inhumane actions towards migrants in a July 3rd email to supervisors and revealed other unreported incidents involving migrants. Now, that's where it starts. He goes on to list concer certain concerns about Bob Wire being in and around the border, you know, in, in, in the water in some places. He was concerned about buoys that were placed in order to push people to heavier or to deeper areas so they'll drown instead of make it across the Rio Grande to seek asylum, which not only is legal, in, or is legal in America, it's legal around the globe. I believe it's part of the Geneva Convention. Now, you would think that's pretty bad. A, a trooper of all people, a police officer in the state of Texas, is siding with the migrants and saying that this is wrong. That's bad enough, right? And you think that the you know the bob wire and barrels and things like that being around the around the Rio Grande would be bad enough. You would think that's bad enough, right? But you go on further. It goes further. The email, which the Guardian independently reviewed, gives a weekly gives weekly events from June twenty fourth to July first, detailing several cases of migrants being caught or injured by barbed wire in Eagle Pass, a Texas city along the U.S. border. In the email, he suggests some policy changes. Wingate wrote. The wire and barrels in the river need to be taken out as it's nothing but inhumane, an inhumane trap in high water and low visibility. He was also told he had to withhold water from migrants. In these temperatures, he had to withhold water from migrants. He went on to say, due to the extreme heat, 
the order to not give water needs to be immediately reversed as well. He added he believed he believes that we have stepped up or stepped over a line into the inhumane. Now, that's from The Guardian, and this is from emails from a state trooper. Not some political hack, not somebody that has an agenda, somebody that works for DPS. He goes on to say that not only was he not allowed to give water to migrants, that he literally saw a child laying flat on the ground of uh, dying of exhaustion heat exhaustion and he was told he wasn't allowed to give them water not only that not only were they leaving these people to die with no water not only were these people being ensnared in bob wire one woman got trapped in one of the barbed wire barrels or around them, around the barbed wire. And she was having a miscarriage. And she was stuck in the barbed wire and could not get out. Not only that, but he was also instructed by the state of Texas, by the governor himself, basically through his edicts to push these people, push the migrants back into the Rio Grande River. Causing high risk to drowning. Well, what kind of country are we living in anymore? What kind of country do we live in when we allow this to happen? I understand that there is a problem at the border, that there are a lot of people coming in. But you know what? A lot of that problem we're causing. Why do the cartels run so much of South America? Because we've interfered in government down there for so many decades, since at least the 40s or 50s, where we've weakened the governments to the point that they cannot fight the cartels or the other people doing wishing to do harm or wreak havoc in their country. Now, is this in every country? No. But most of the countries we've intervened in. On top of that, why do the cartels continue to thrive in South America, Mexico, and such? Yeah, because of our dependency on their drugs. Because we have all the drugs listed as illegal. And since they're illegal, there's going to be a black market for it. And there's no way we'll ever shut down the black market to drugs as long as there's such a criminal penalty for them. So some of this is on us as a nation. Some of the problems we're having with people coming in is that. But there's also another side to it. That this is supposed to be America, the beacon on the hill, the shining light for the world to see. Everybody wants to be an American. And I don't see the problem with that. If they want to, if they want to live here, they want to, they they don't want to live where they live, and they want to live be an American, and they want to become a citizen here. Why should we stop them? I thought we were supposed to be exceptional. I thought we were supposed to be the the best place on the planet.
for as many problems as we have in this country and many issues as we're dealing with, the creeping fascism, for example, the hate for the LGBTQ community rising, we're still better than a lot of other countries. But if we don't wake up, and we don't start taking care of our own, we don't start taking care of the immigrants that come through our borders, we're going to be no different than Russia. We're going to be no different than than North Korea. Right? We won't be any better than those. Texas is falling into a state as being a failed state. This is this is Nazi type ta- uh, you know, tactics. Make it to where people die before they can be part of your country. Right? Make it to where you've otherized people so much that you pass bills dehumanizing them, that you sign edicts from your governor's desk, from your little wheelchair. Make it to where people will die because you you have otherized them to the point that they're no longer human to you. I'll tell you right now, I find this to be absolutely abhorrent. One of the worst things I've ever seen Texas do. I lived there for 40 years. For the most part. I grew up my entire life there, for the most part. Supposedly born in Dallas, according to the birth certificate. Parents spent time in another state until I was like three at one point. Then I was brought to a foster home in Texas. But I grew up loving that state. I grew up loving everything about Texas. Because where I, when I grew up, you didn't really see these divides, right? As a kid, I, I didn't notice racism. You know, I just didn't see it. I'm not saying it didn't exist because it clearly did. Right? But as a kid, you kind of sheltered from that. You're protected from that. But what I see now. What I see now going on in Texas is disgusting. And I don't think I'll ever return. My mom still lives in Texas. If it wasn't for that, I would just say cut Texas off from the rest of the country. Because it is one of the most vile places on this planet. Not giving children water who are possibly going to die of heat exhaustion. Letting women who are pregnant or possibly going through a miscarriage be stuck in barbed wire where they could possibly die. How, how is that pro-life? How do you call yourself pro-life as a state, yet allow people to die on your border? Now, I know there's going to be a contingent of people out there. They're going to say, well, you need to do it the right way. Seeking asylum is the right way. That is one of the right ways. It is one of the legal ways. As I said, not only in the U.S., but mostly globally. And it's absolutely terrible to see what Texas is doing. 
there's no excuse to not provide water to people if you have the access to water. There's no reason for that. There's no reason to push children and pregnant women and stuff like that back into the water. There's no reason for that. You sit there and demand that every child be born down there in Texas. That every child be born from the moment that the sperm touches the egg. Yet you have living children that are crossing your border because of a lack of safety where they came from in most cases. And you're going to deny them water and you're going to let them drown by pushing them back into the river. I'll never understand this. In fact, I don't want to understand this. I could never understand how you could hate somebody so much that you would rather them die than cross your border. It's been the Big Grand Show. I'll see you down the road. Good luck.